Here's how to replace the lamps in the PAL light and make sure they are correctly aligned. PAL sector lights use a special type of projector lamp called the M series. They have a distinctive flat filament shape which gives an increase of about 40% in light output for the same power. The lamps are mounted on two pins made of tungsten wire which provide the mechanical support for the lamp and the electrical current path. PAL-6 sector lights use the M36 lamp, rated at 24 volts and 250 watts. PAL-3 lights normally use the M28 lamp, rated at 12 volts and 100 watts, but sometimes use the smaller M32 lamp, rated at 50 watts, or pre-focus lamps with vertical filaments. When buying lamps, always select ones with a life of 2,000 hours. Some lamps look similar, but are only rated for 50 hours. These are unsuitable for navigation lights, because their life is too short. Also, they burn hotter, and can explode when used in a PAL light. Lamps which are flashed are exposed to more stress, and can fail prematurely. Special M36 lamps are available with reinforced filament support posts and these are recommended for all PAL-6 lights which have a flash character. Replacing lamps is the single most important aspect of PAL light maintenance. If new lamps are not fitted correctly, the light will not operate at full intensity. When holding halogen lamps, avoid touching the clear envelope. The slightest amount of oil from your fingers will etch into the quartz and weaken it, leading to early lamp failure. If you do touch the lamp, put a drop of isopropyl alcohol on a clean tissue and wipe the lamp thoroughly to remove all finger marks. Lamp pins should be cleaned lightly with a fine emery paper, either a 600 or 1200 grit before fitting. This can be done the day before the site visit. Lamps are fitted onto an automatic six-place lamp changer. Remove all the burned out lamps, including the one in the current burning position. Move the lamp changer forward by pressing down on the solenoid. Move it back by holding the escapement wheel and rotating against the spring pressure. Three tools are used when fitting new lamps. These tools are located on the side of the lamp changer. The lamp pins are inserted into expanding sockets called collets. This tool is used to open the spring-loaded collets which grip the lamp pins like jaws. The two most important things for contact are that the lamp pins are clean and that both collets grip the lamp pins tightly. There should be quite a firm drag on the pins when the lamp or collet tool is pushed in or pulled out. If in doubt, check each collet separately with this tool. The lamp can feel firm, but only one collet might be gripping. Some older PAL lights do not have spring-loaded collets. In this case, the collets can be manually adjusted up like this. Slip one end of the tool over and rotate gently to squeeze the collet arms together. Use the other end to adjust the hole size. Now insert the new lamp. Regardless of the collet type, only push the lamp pins halfway into the collet. Place the sight gauge over the lamp with the notches lined up in the filament directions. Press the lamp down gently until the top of the filament is level with the top of the gauge. If it doesn't go in this far, then it's okay to have the bottom of the filament level with the bottom of the wide slot. But all the lamps on the lamp changer must be set the same way. Use the sight gauge to inspect the filament position. If necessary, adjust the lamp side to side by checking that the filament is exactly in the center of the wide slot. Only a small adjustment is possible here. Finally, check the fore and aft alignment. If this is not correct, the lamp pins may need to be bent, which is difficult without breaking the glass at the base of the lamp. If the filament is a long way out, then reject the lamp. Set all six lamps up in exactly the same way, even those that have not been replaced on this visit.
This means that when a new lamp moves into position, the new filament will be in exactly the same position as the previous one, which has just burned out. Now stow the lamp fitting tools back on the side of the lamp changer, like this. The lamp changer needs to be adjusted, so the lamp filament is aligned with the optical system of the PAL light. During normal maintenance, the lamp changer position should not need to be changed, but it must always be checked. The correct position is when an image of the filament forms above the real filament. This image must sit just above and almost touching the filament. If it does this with each lamp, then the lamp changer is adjusted correctly. The best way to view the filament is with the lamp switched on and looking through dark glasses. Look at the reflection of the lamp as it appears in the first lens. It's easier to look from above, but the details can be clearer when viewed from either side, because the image is less distorted. A few PAL3 lights have pre-focus lamps, so the filament is vertical. In this case, the filament and its image are set side by side, with a small gap about half the width of the filament to allow for variations between lamps. The standard lamp changers are screwed down onto springs with three cap screws. The best tool for the adjusting of the lamp changer is this ball end T-bar hex key. Use it to adjust each screw in turn. Adjusting the lamp changer can be tricky and could take 10 or 15 minutes the first time you do it, so be patient. Older PAL lights have lamp changers held down with two tie-down screws located inside the lamp changer assembly and two jacking screws located on the outside of the assembly. The filament placement needs to be the same, but the method of adjustment is slightly different. Loosen the tie-down screws and then adjust the jacking screws to bring the filament to the correct position, while holding the lamp changer steady with one hand. Then gently re-tighten the tie-down screws, but only enough to stop the lamp changer wobbling. Any tighter will distort the base and could cause the lamp changer to jam. On the standard lamp changer, first get the height right by adjusting all three screws in the same direction. As the lamp changer is raised, the image comes down until it can be seen to just touch the filament. A tiny gap is better than overlap because overlap blocks the light. Once the filament height is correct, the lamp changer can be tilted fore and aft to bring the image directly above and in line with the filament. Finally, adjust the lamp changer side to side to bring the image directly above and in line with the filament. When you are satisfied that the first lamp filament is set in the correct position, manually index the lamp changer to check that all the other filaments line up correctly as well. They may not all be perfect, but should be aligned as close as possible. Check that the lamp changer smoothly indexes right through to the last lamp, then reset the lamp changer back to position 1. This completes the relamping and focusing procedure.